Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, NCAA champion, Tate Jackson. Tate, how's it going, man? It is going great. Going, going fantastic. Got a breakfast taco to start the day, so... have a more professional setup than I do today. As I was telling you, I had to go outside. I was relegated to the outdoors because I have a dehumidifier, dehumidifier, uh, saving, saving my house from water problems. But, uh, what have you done this before you got the headphones, you got the microphone? Well, so we're all set up for the stream, right? I used to be big into the video game streaming. So I got this, I got the okay. whole, the whole microphone on a stand and everything feeling like I'm a a pro podcaster. Um, but I actually, I haven't streamed in forever. Uh, I did it pretty consistently like my junior year and then just stopped, just completely stopped doing it pretty much. Um, Peroni took over, Blake took over. He's, he's the big stream guy now. He, he pulls in all the viewers. So I'll just let him, let him keep it. Yeah. What did you, I mean, did you have a lot of viewers? What, what, what I, I've never, I've talked to a lot of people lately because you know streaming is a big thing now. Makes yeah. sense. What what was the what was the pull of streaming for you? What why did you enjoy it so much? Well, first of all, like it was just during the heyday of Fortnite, right? Like everybody was playing Fortnite. Everybody in the everybody and their mother was playing Fortnite, and I was I was pretty good. I wasn't like you know Justin Rest was better than me. He's a he's a big <laughs> streamer too. He streamed for a long time, you know and. Okay. Blake's better than me now because I don't play the game anymore and you know but like I just enjoyed it a lot and like the big thing for me was I enjoyed engaging with people like a, a lot of younger swimmers mm -hmm. um, would like hop in the stream and just ask me swim questions oh, um, nice. like Master Ninja 42 I don't know who it is <laughs> like I don't know who that is uh -huh. they will every single time I stream Master Ninja 42 is right there like watching my stream every time always asking swim questions How's practice been like this? And it's, it's awesome. I mean, it just makes you feel like it's like a little baby clinic every single time. Cause like, I love the clinics. I love going and talking to, you know, talking, swimming with people. And so it's like, uh, you know, and I get to play video games during it. We don't have to sit at a swim pool. So <laughs> dude, that's a win-win master yeah. ninja 42. Like we're buds. I don't know who that yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. Huge <laughs> shout out master ninja. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm going to look for master ninja 42 in the comments now. Maybe they're, Got to. maybe they're everywhere. Make, it, make an appearance in the swim swim comments <laughs> seriously um so that 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 kind of is a perfect segue you know you're a professional now you've been you've been that way for a while i wanted to talk to you about this anyway what what have you enjoyed about about being a pro in the sport after going through the ncaa system uh you know i enjoy uh making money that's i mean <laughs> being able to survive to do like by doing this is sweet. Like that's number one. Like that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Um, I think if you would have told me when I was first starting to swim, just following my little brother to the, or my older brother to the pool, I would have been very confused. Um, <laughs> I like, uh, I feel like as soon as we kind of went into the professional area, as opposed to a college swimmer, cause I'm still training at Texas with Eddie and, and Wyatt, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, uh, there's definitely another level of, responsibility almost given like I feel like my my opinion is much I wouldn't say much more valued but I feel like it's valued in the way that they care about what I want to do with meets uh granted with corona we haven't had very many meets right. for me to have an input on but you know so say like Des Moines if I'm like hey I'd like to you know I'd like to come down a little bit more and go really fast at Des Moines you know I feel like that I have a little bit more pull with a statement like that than I would have in college. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the focus in college is obviously college. And then now they're kind of letting me pick and choose what I want to focus on. Um, yeah. So I really enjoy that. And then I, like I said earlier, I love clinics. I, I've done a three, three now, two, maybe just two. Um, but I've loved both of them. I've had a great time. I really enjoy, I guess, you know me, man, I like talking. I like, <laughs> like, I just like chatting it up. So like clinics are great. Kids like asking questions. I like telling stories. So yeah, I'm, I'm a more timid person. I, I won't usually approach someone it, like that. I don't know on a pool deck. I might sometimes, but like at maybe like seven times or eight times out of 10, I won't. But Tate is one of the most, the friendliest people I've ever encountered on a pool deck for, for the listeners out there. He'll always talk to me. And I love that because, uh, because I like talking to people too. 
I'm just a little more timid. I don't know if people want to talk to me. Tate talks to everyone and everyone wants to talk to him. He's, you're a great guy to see on a pool deck. Well, thanks, man. And I can't wait to see you on a pool deck again, honestly. I am. Oh, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, dude. I've been, I've been trying to reach out, shoot messages to people. I miss people, man. I miss – because there's so many – that's another thing too, right? Pro-life now. I don't know half the Texas team, right? Like there's – the freshmen, I, I know them. I know who they are. They're impressive freshmen, but I don't personally know them. I, yeah. I didn't have a hand in their recruiting process. You know, like they don't really know who I am other than just that's Tate. No. Um, so it's like my real good, good friends, I don't see anymore. Like Jack Conger's in Virginia, you know, Justin Rest is in NC State. I got people everywhere. Zach Apple, I haven't seen in forever. Like I'm just miss people. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's certainly getting to me too, especially, you know, I think we're both pretty accustomed to traveling and, and seeing people we know on the road quite a bit. And yeah. That's, it's, it's a weird thing. So speaking of, of traveling and being with cool teammates, uh, and the pro life. Let's talk ISL. Um, you were a part of the inaugural season. Tell me, tell me about your ISL experience. I was just honestly, like, this is the only way I can describe it. I was happy to be there. Right. Because I, they announced ISL and originally I know I hadn't been approached by anybody to be picked up for a team. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just a little bit later on, right before the, um, Maryland meet I got the message from Jason who was interested in having me join mm -hmm. and yeah I mean I, like I told him I was just I was happy to be a part of it I think it's I think it's sweet I think it's just awesome because let's be real for the most part I was a spectator um, <laughs> for the last season I, I swam like four races and I mean they were awesome races and I enjoyed every second of them but to be able to sit and watch how it was all produced and put on was incredible um, I was really happy to be there and be a part of it it was so I'm, I'm excited. I'm just really excited for ISL. I think it has a lot of potential. And I think that I personally have potential there too. I like the format of it. I think it benefits me well. I'm, um, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. I like it. I, I don't know necessarily if I'll ever uh, be that great at skins. Uh, repeat, repeat sprints <laughs> aren't necessarily something I'm known for. But, <laughs> but I, do, I do enjoy it a lot. Um, and I love the fact that I have a team, you know, I like the fact that I can rep the Cali Condors when I go out. I like being able to wear the, wear our merch and stuff. It, it's like a little bit of a Texas, you know, it's a little <laughs> bit of a, a pride thing. It's cool to have, you know? Absolutely. Do you, I, we, you know, we don't, we haven't heard a lot about ISL. There's, there's maybe going to be a, a, a condensed season in the fall, but you know, really who knows yet. Can you say if you, are you on a team for season two? Are we allowed to announce that? I, I'm not asking what team, just are you on a team? I am. I am I am a part of ISL for the upcoming season, and I'm extremely excited for it. Um, okay. Yeah. If, if it happens. We still are unsure, I think. I think <laughs> most of the world is unsure as to what is happening. But assuming it happens, um, I, I am on a team, and I'm, I'm very excited. That's, that's cool. And, I, yeah, that I, I, I won't pry anymore, but – that's if we were, if we are allowed to say it, I would say it, but I, I honestly, I genuinely don't know. I don't know either. And I don't want to, I don't want to get anyone in trouble. I'm not trying to break any rules, but, but that's exciting. Hey, um, if you know, you know, that's, that's what I'll <laughs> say. If you know, you know, if you know, you know. Um, <clears throat> all right. So let's, let's take it back a little bit. You, you talked about following your older brother to swim practice. Um, how, how did, how did you get started in swimming? Oh man. So right? This goes back to my clinics. I love telling stories, dude. I love stories so much and I'll tell stories all day. So I always tell stories about my older brother because my older brother, Trent, um, was a swimmer before me. And I like to say that he was the athletic Jackson in the fact that I would pretty much just go to his sports, right? So like we're on the same baseball team, but like he was the pitcher and the best hitter. And then I played bench really well. <laughs> so, you know, like I just kind of tagged along. Right. And so I originally started swimming when I was four, five or six, probably guesstimate. Um, and I genuinely did start swimming just because our neighbors did. And my brother went like my brother did one season. And then the following season, I was like, okay, well, if he's doing it, I probably should be better than him. Um, <laughs> and how, how, that, how much older is your brother? Uh, two years. Okay. Yeah two years older than me. And so that was like my full goal. When I first started swimming, my goal was to beat my brother, just be better than Trent. Um, which, you know, I achieved that. Um, shout out Trent. Yuck, yuck. But that was how I started swimming it was purely just to beat Trent. And then, you know, I ended up 
following him for a long time. You know, we were on the same team for a long time. And then he went to Notre Dame and I almost went to Notre Dame. And then I tricked him out and switched it up on him. Um, but yeah, follow, follow my brother to the, to the pool. <laughs> so, so your brother ended up swimming in college. Did, didn't, uh, do you just have two brothers or do you have more? I have two brothers, both my brothers. So my older brother Trent swam at Notre Dame for four years uh-huh. and somehow transitioned into a breaststroker his senior year. I still don't know how that, how he pulled that off. <laughs> um, and then my younger brother Trey is going into his sophomore year here at Texas. Okay. So that's really nice. I like being able to swim on a team with my brother again. That's because Trey is three years younger than me. And so me and him never had as much uh, like team time. We weren't on the same team because he was a little bit younger. Mm-hmm. Um, and he started a little bit later in the sport than we did. And so he was always just a little bit behind in the group that like me and Trent would have been in. And so to have him come to Texas and now like we train together, like right now we're like in the same lane, right? Well, (laughs) lanes next to each other, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. I love having him there. What? So, you know, your, your older brother, the goal was obviously always to be faster than him. Is that, you know, is the dynamic different when you're the older brother? Oh yeah. Now, Now I'm just, now I just tell people like, I'm just waiting for Trey to beat me. Right. Like that's the <laughs> ultimate goal now. Like if Trey beats me, come on, I'm like the greatest coach ever. Like, cause I'm helping her. Right. So yeah, that's my goal now is I love, I love helping Trey and I love coaching Trey. And I mean, that's always been like what Texas was for me. And that was like a huge pull when I was going was that the seniors coached the freshmen. Like when I was a freshman, John Murray taught me how to swim, you know, like they help you a ton. And now I got to do that for my little brother. And that's awesome. It's so cool. You know, and, So the goal now is to get Trey to be as good as Trey can be and to get (laughs) him to like feel everything out of the sport that he can get, you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously that's a secondary goal to my current personal goals, but it's all, it's a goal. It's a brotherly (laughs) goal. Absolutely. I mean, which is awesome. Um, You know, every, anytime you can have a mentor mentee relationship, I think that's, that's something that's pretty special. Um, Yeah. I'm, I'm using it a lot because you know, I'm not perfect. Right. So the things I coach him, Helps me remember to fix my stroke too, right? Like, <laughs> Trey, streamline better. Like, well, maybe I should streamline better. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> that, you know, it's a win-win. <laughs> Sounds like a win-win. Yeah, it's good um, stuff. So, so you've, you, you're from Austin. You're, you're a rare Austinite. Uh, as close as I can be. I got here in uh, 2011, 12, 2011, 2012. I was here for high school, so I think that that earns me the right of, you know, I'm yeah. from here. I went to high school here. That's where my, all my diplomas are from here, right? So, like. <laughs> well, where where did you move from? Uh, Iowa, a small town. Well, it's not that small, but East Iowa, Muscatine. Muscatine, Iowa is where I moved from. Okay. Yeah, we were there for a long time. Um, and then the coach I was working with um, switched teams. And we had just seen Nitro. I probably would have been, like, Lacone at the – Palo Alto juniors just killed it. Like just destroyed the meat. Okay. Um, oh, Zach Gunn was who it was. He was him and Lacone. I think were great breaststrokers like destroyed that meat, like did super, super well. And then we were just like, wow, who's this nitro team? Let's check them out. And luckily my dad had a job offer around the area. And so we just honestly kind of went for swimming. It was awesome. <laughs> That's super cool. How, and yeah. So how old were you at the time? 14, 15? I would have had, I would have finished my freshman year of high school in Iowa and then come down and started high school, sophomore year. So sophomore year on, I've been in Austin. Okay. And what, you know, I mean, obviously there's a lot of polls for, for swimming and to going to UT, but you know, you, you stayed in your, you stayed in the town that, that you graduated high school in. What, what, what went into that decision? Honestly, well, I mean, if you remember, it wasn't the original decision. Um, I picked Notre Dame originally kind of because I had a little bit of a fear of going to school in the same city that my parents were living in. Okay. Um, which like, that wasn't the real reason I picked, right? I obviously picked because of, I was just hyped to be on a team with my brother. That's why I picked Notre Dame in the first place was I was like, yeah. yes, like to be back with Trent. Yeah. Um, and then I obviously was just like, took three, three, three or four more weeks. And I was like, wait a second, why did I make this decision for my brother? <laughs> and then just kind of went back around and realized that, you know, I had probably misaligned some, some team chemistry th- things that I had better at tech, right? Like it was just like, I had made the decision really quickly to be with my brother and not really thought about where I should be. Um, don't rush into your decisions, kids. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was a huge, not a huge, but that was something I was a little bit wary about. Like, do I want to be 
20 minutes from my mom. Like, do I want to be that? And then, yes, I do. Yes, I want to be 20 minutes from my mom. It was the greatest thing I could have possibly done. You guys ever come back from a travel meet and your laundry's done? <sighs> come on. That's so nice. She's the, she's the greatest thing to me. She's done ev- like literally everything I could have asked for. My mom's done. It's been awesome to be here with her. Yeah. It's like uh, having your own personal assistant. Like my mom would do anything for me. Right. So I wholeheartedly agree. I remember my mom bringing me just bags of groceries to my dorm. I, you know, I'm in the same situation. I went to college in my hometown and she, yeah, she would just bring me bags of groceries to my yeah. dorm room and everyone else was like, and I was like, yeah. Like move on, grow up. I'm like, what? You're telling me if your mom offered, you'd say no. <laughs> it's like, it's free food and I don't have money. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not like I asked my mother to do these things. It's just that she was offering and I love her and I love the fact that she loves me and I was accepting of it. It helped out. It helped me. Again, that's a win-win. Everyone's yeah. getting something out of this. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's, that's really cool. And it's, yeah. it's nice to have your parents that close. Yeah. And I'm, the other perk of like being from Austin, right? It's like, I'm the Austin guy on the team, right? Mm-hmm. Like I know, I know the area so well and I know how to get everywhere. And I know, you know, I have a lot of stuff that I can offer up. A bunch of freshmen can be like, where do we want to go for food? I'm like, this is where you want to go. Yeah. So I feel like that, that it's pretty nice. It loses its, it loses its power. Once everyone realizes that after you've been here for like two years, you know, any, everything anyway. <laughs> yeah. But you know, still it's, maybe still impression, impressive to incoming freshmen. <laughs> I know all the high school rivalries. <laughs> uh, so what are your go-to food spots? Uh, this, this breakfast taco that I was eating right before the podcast comes from taco joint. Um, which is conveniently located very close to the Texas Swimming Center. And uh, I get my breakfast there, no shame, four times a week. Because um, it's just great. It's just great stuff. That's like my go-to. And then my, one of my favorite food trucks is Patrizzi's, which is over on Mainer. It's like a um, homemade, homemade pasta place. So they hand make pasta in a food truck, and it's incredible. Carbonara is Patrizzi's. I'm going to have to mm-hmm. check that one out. It's really good. That sounds great. Um, th- I, do you have one more? You have one third, more. A third go-to food spot. A third go-to food spot. Oh yeah. A uh, China family. That's where I, that's where I've been getting a ton of food. It's just a, just a Chinese restaurant guys. It's pretty basic, but <laughs> it's, it's the best one I've found in uh, the downtown Austin area. There's still one I like up from where I grew up more called Hunan Ranch, but it's about, 25 minutes for me now. So I don't usually make the trip up. That makes sense. Uh, so every time I've been to nitro, it seems like they do some pretty intense workouts, kind of, kind of more like what I would imagine a, a Sean Grisha type swimmer to, to, to be doing, you know, what, what, yeah. And you swim the 50 and the hundred, you know, what, uh, yeah. when you first came to nitro, what what was what did you think of it well i mean to be fair the first the first two years i was at nitro I was, I was still again following my brother right so like he still would have been the main like this kid's gonna swim in college he's you know he's six foot three he's got he's got muscles that he looks good you know like he's gonna be an athlete and then it's like oh also his brother's here um and so the first two years i kind of just did those practices to the best of my abilities, right? Like one of my vivid memories is getting lapped by Quinn Carroza. Like one of my first practices, like she just destroyed me in practice. And I was like, I don't know if this is probably the place for me. (laughs) Um, And then we probably had our first meet a little bit, a little bit down the road. And uh, you know, they kind of realized maybe we should have him doing a little bit more sprint oriented stuff. Mm -hmm. And then me and Mark Curley, who would have been another uh, 50 freestyle based swimmer at the time. Um, kind of got separated and then me and me and him kind of started our own little nitro sprint group. Um, and then the real, the real help happened when I hit junior year and I went, uh, went ni- 19 for the first time question mark, I think in the spring. And then my coach was like, Oh, okay. We can really start training you like a sprinter now. <laughs> and then, then that's where the sprint practices that everyone knows and loves began, right? I, was, I think I was on like six or seven practices a week, and I 
would never go above five grand. Like if no practice over five grand ever. And wow. that was awesome. Yeah. That's, that sounds like the dream. <laughs> and then I went to college and it just ripped away from me. <laughs> Eddie was like middle distance group. <laughs> no, oh. I'm just kidding. He didn't do that. I've been, <laughs> I've been sprinkler my whole life in Texas. I can't, I can't hang with them. Honestly. Like I, I still, I, I, I bark at Maxime. I'm like, Maxime, you're too good to be in sprint group. Like, please. <laughs> He said 160 heart rate. You got to go slower. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, he'll, uh, cause that's what they do. Right. They'll tell you like 160 heart rate, go this time. And then Maxime will break, beat that time by 15 seconds and have the same heart rate as me. I'm like, go away. <laughs> this is so frustrating. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty funny that Maxime's in sprint group, but he's, he's, I guess he's, 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 he's it seems like, in, he's merged he does yeah. it depends on the day right yeah. so like i'm sprint group every day and then he'll be with me probably twice a week okay yeah twice or three times a week maybe depending on the week it's and also depending on the practice like if i'm doing a pretty heavy aerobic sprint group practice he'll probably go with me gotcha because the option the other option's townley and nobody wants that <laughs> <laughs> wow so townley's in sprint groups i mean he is a he is a good sprinter he maybe barely gets squeaked into sprint group once a month. Maybe like <laughs> most of the time he will, me and him will warm up together because we live around each other. So we've been carpooling. We've been training at uh, Waterloo, like a okay. little bit North of like 20 minutes North of where we're living. Yeah. Um, and so me, he'll hop my lane and he'll warm up with me every single day. And then every <laughs> single day, Eddie's like, tell me other side. <laughs> complete other side of the pool as far away from sprint group as you could be. Just so he knows. Just so he knows it's not even close. That's, that's pretty great. That's, uh, I, I made it to one of the other Texas swimming sites. Uh, oh, AOC. Like, yeah, I saw, I, saw AOC. The, I saw the pancakes video. Yep. Yeah. Because that's with was, Casey. Yeah, with, with Casey, a, formal, a former Texas Longhorn, which is cool. Of, yeah, of my class, my, my boy Casey. <laughs> yeah, and it was, it was funny because the, uh, m a lot of the Texas guys were on, like, one end of the pool. You know, you had uh, Shebet, Lacone, Dean, you know, like, the, a lot of those guys, the Larsons. And then, at, you know, like, 20 lanes over is Alvin Jiang. <laughs> yep, makes sense. Yeah. oh my gosh i miss alvin oh my gosh that just made me realize how how long it's been since i've had a tate alvin and chris stocker practice like <laughs> those are my my favorite because those guys are insane at underwaters like those two are crazy underwaters yeah and i'm i'm not the worst underwaters but i'm not that good yeah and so to do yeah. underwater sets with those guys is nuts like just watching them do it and like trying to keep up with them and stuff it's super fun yeah what what is an what is an underwater set with those two look like what is something uh, well, so you guys would do together? Ed's like a big fan of uh, when you don't do underwater only. So like we, we, we rarely would do a set that's like 825s all underwater. But he'll do like kind of longer semi-aerobic sets. And then we'll just focus like your, your planned kick count for like 100 free. So like I'll do a 200, a 150, a 100. They're on some obscure interval. And then I'm supposed to go kick count plus one on the 200 kick count on the 150 kick count on the 100. Right. So something like that. And then my kick counts four and Alvin's like <laughs> nine. So it's so, so very different sets, but you know, they're, they're good sets. Yeah. So that, that, that gets us right into your time at Texas. Uh, I mean, it seemed like, I don't know if this was the case for you. It seemed like you got better every year you were in college. Oh yeah. I felt like, I made huge gains. My, like from, from the start of freshman year to the end of freshman year, I felt like two completely different people, like wholly different. I was probably, I was 15 pounds heavier. Mm -hmm. My best time going into school was like 19.8. And then I went 19.2 that year. Like it was, it was a good, yeah. I mean, I, I felt like I got better every year. I had a, I don't think I had a single great performance in NCAAs ever, but hey, can't change it. It's fine. Yeah. It's whatever. I mean, so what what year was was there a year that was your favorite like what, what do you mean you mean favorite ncaa's favorite just like all around fair question uh let's go favorite all around my favorite all around year is pro is probably not going to be my senior year because of the finale of it was not very a highlight 
Mm-hmm. Um, probably junior year or sophomore year. I actually, I want to say sophomore year was my favorite um, for a number of reasons because that is where I was the most in the middle. So you had people younger than you, right? So where you had, you felt like you had some type of authority that you didn't really have, <laughs> but you also had those two classes above you. Because mm-hmm. I think what took away from senior year for me was that like, you're the, you're the guy. There's mm-hmm. like, I don't have a John Murray. I don't have a Jack Conger. I don't have a Will Lacone that I can like look up to and be like, these are my guys. My, these are my, my team, my team dads. Yeah. Um, and so like that kind of makes sophomore year great. And then on top of that, we were living in the dorms. Okay. And so, and then the freshmen were in the dorms too. So it's sophomores and freshmen in the dorms together and like, come on, the shenanigans that you get up to in the dorms, like that's mm-hmm. great. Sure. Um, so- sophomore year, probably my favorite. And I, that was the big breakout year too. I think that was the summer after sophomore year is when I went 48 for the first time long course. Okay. Uh, maybe. Yeah, that's right. Cause that was us open 2017. That's right. Okay. Okay. I- um, Iron trapper. <laughs> um, do you, do you have a favorite Eddieism from, from your time in college? I, I, you know, you feel like, I feel like you hear all these stories about Eddie and, his team speeches and his quotable moments you know, he's always cracking wise. Do you have, do you have, do you have a good Eddieism you can share with us? I mean, he all, always refers to me as the huge, uh, the human hydrofoil. That's what he calls me. Like always. <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily my favorite, but it is one of the most interesting things that I'm called usually. Um, yeah. That one's, that one's pretty good. Like it's like, you know, I don't have any personal, but yeah, I get that one a lot is why I brought it up. Just human hydrofoil. Um, my favorite Eddieism. Uh, it's not nearly not really an ism, but it's just like my favorite. My favorite part about Eddie is that he so flawlessly transitions in and out of jokes, mm-hmm. right? So like he'll just you'll be having this huge serious conversation, and then just here's a joke about sharks, and then this huge <laughs> serious conversation. <laughs> And then like, you just kind of are sitting there talking to me like, did he just, did he do that? Like, did he pull that off? <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's what I, I've been liking about it. He's, he's a good guy. Um, Eddieisms in particular though, like I'm a huge fan of the one on the back of our shirts. Have you seen the one that's sort of like people from outer space? Like logically, why not? Okay. He was what? talking about aliens one time. <laughs> I could run and grab the shirt, but there's a quote where he there's a video. I think Andrew Wilson maybe took the video of him where he's talking about aliens. Like someone on the team was like, Ed, what do you think about aliens? And he was like, uh, people from outer space, logically just why not? <laughs> and so we put it on the back of our shirt and we wore it around in CAAs. Like it's just says people from outer space, logically, <laughs> why not? Hyphen Eddie Reese. Cause it's just, he just says things that it's like, did you fully think that? Have you seen, uh, have you seen the John Mulaney skit where he talks about um, JJ? Oh, no, not not JJ Bittenbinder, the guy he works for with that like quack quack duck guy. Have you seen this at all? You know what I'm talking about? I don't think so. Well, for anyone that's watching that has seen all of John Mulaney's stuff, the bit where he talks about his boss that wears the full button up suit and refers to people as quack quack. Sometimes I think Eddie's like that, where it's just <laughs> he just is saying things and they just stick and it's just it just works. It's all fine. <laughs> Those are those are all great Eddieisms. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a guy, dude. He's interesting. <laughs> what what year was the alien shirt? The alien shirt, I think that was my senior year, because I think that was our shirt for NCAA's. Okay. Um and he I think he said the quote my junior or sophomore year. Because Wilson would have still been here. So it would it wouldn't have been my senior year. Okay. Um when he said it, but the shirt came out, yeah. <laughs> it looks totally normal from the front. Like that's my favorite part. It's just like a gray shirt with a big orange bar that says like Texas Longhorns. Uh-huh. And then the quote's just on the back, just there. <laughs> why not? People from outer space. Why not? Logically, why not? <laughs> that's awesome. Um all right. So t- tell me about uh since quarantine happened, you know, how how have you, you you're swimming at Waterloo now? Um was there a period where you weren't swimming how were you staying in shape were you one of those people were you one of those swimming freaks that can run too or is that out of the wheelhouse no i mean and so this actually even goes back to the fact that i'm from austin and i think that was a huge benefit for me during the quarantine because the, the resources that i had were probably far greater than that of somebody that was out of state or in a, in a city that they're not necessarily from um i took time off uh, i think we we got the news on like a wednesday that uh 
that um, the Olympics was going to be postponed. Because up until then, our group, our pro group, was still training together at a public pool in Round Rock, like outside. Um, just social distancing and like doing all that. Because this was before they had postponed it. We were all just kind of in limbo waiting. And then as soon as we found that out, um, like people just obviously started taking vacations. Um, and so I think I took, I took the rest of that week off and then a full week off. And then I started swimming again, but it was more of a like, we have literally no clue how long this quarantine is going to go. I should probably just be in the water. I was swimming at a uh, nitro, maybe 3000 yards a day, like maybe just staying wet. I was happy I had water. I knew most of my friends across the country didn't have water. There was a little bit of a guilt in me. Like I shouldn't be training, you know, I shouldn't be grinding right now. Like a lot of my friends can't like, let's just be happy with what we have. Yeah. And also none of my friends are training right now. I don't really want to be grinding that, you know, I don't want to be going that hard. Yeah. And then uh, once it started to become a little, cause Texas, you know, we, we opened up pretty quickly after. Um, once we opened up a little bit, I was able to rent weight equipment. I was able to rent a whole squat rack from Tim Meyer, the guy that I, he was my personal trainer. Um, when I was in high school swimming at nitro, he's still here in Cedar park. I actually work for him now. Um, <laughs> nice. but I was able to rent a squat rack and I lift, I put it, set it up in my parents' driveway and me and Townley and my little brother just lifted in my driveway for three weeks, probably. And I was barely swimming, put on a ton of weight, just trying to get huge. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then Waterloo started back up and been pretty much doing that since. Uh, I swam a little bit too in an endless pool because for a while there was a small gap in between when the round rock pool stopped and I started going to Nitro where I had no pool. Mm -hmm. And I was swimming in um, Kirk Stackle, uh, an Olympian from 88. I was swimming in his backyard pool. Cause he has like a 20 yard lane in his backyard. And so I was just doing laps in that. And again, not a lot, like we're talking minimal yardage. <laughs> um, but I was able to stay in the water and I think that helped like when Waterloo started and we started doing real practices and we amped up, I think that helped a lot. Like I, I at least still had my stroke and I didn't have to have that awkward feeling where you're swimming through syrup or air, depending on what stroke you're taking and feel like a baby giraffe, you know? <laughs> Definitely. I, th I think we can all relate to that feeling. Certainly now <laughs> as yeah. people are getting back into the water, it's not a great feeling. Um, yeah. That's my least favorite swimming feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. Um, crap. I had a, I had a question I was going to ask you. Oh, so let's, uh, that's how you've been. That's, that's how you've been during quarantine. Um, I forgot to, I, you know, this is, this conversation's all over the place. That's fine. No worries. Uh, I, let's talk last summer. Last uh, summer. Yeah, for sure. You know, again, outside looking in seemed like a pretty good summer for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a really good summer. You know, I had a, a rough NCAAs. Um, I fell apart pretty much completely mentally at the meet, right? Like just like crashed upon myself from whatever it may be, my own personal pressures that I put on myself. Um, and luckily I was able to like come out of that and make it a positive experience and be like, yo, we can't let that happen again. Um, so I was able to like work through that a little bit and then going into the summer with a whole new, a whole new outlook on like racing. Right. Cause that was really where I fell apart was I was afraid to race, um, at NCAAs. Um, and what it was Wugs, right. Was, was, was my, that was my experience, right. It was my first international experience. It was my first time getting picked for a team. It was, incredible and you know it was in Italy I can't I can't complain at all there was things about the trip that I would have changed and some stuff that was poorly planned but it was an incredible experience and I loved swimming like this even this year on the 4th of July like I sent Robert Howard a text I was like dude I I remember one year ago we were walking out of the ready room listening to the courtesy of the red white and blue by Toby Keith it was the 4th of July we were some of the 4 by 100 freestyle relay in Italy I had a USA flag on my cap it was the coolest thing ever, right? The sweetest trip. Um, and it was a super informative trip too, because I, I was still struggling with that hundred free long course, like, cause I had made a lot of progress on my hundred free short course. And then switching that into the long course pool was a little difficult. And I was like, couldn't really figure out where I was going to put my breath count or, you know, where I was going to take the first breath, stuff like that. Super informative me because I had so many coaches that have never coached me or been with me before there on the pool deck. Like Brayden Holloway, huge 
tip. He was just like, Hey man, try breathing every stroke. I was like, sure. Why not? Let's check it out. And I went fast. I, you know, that was, that was the 47, four split that I had at, um, at WUG. So I was like, okay, I guess I can breathe now. Cause literally two years ago where, when I just told you I went my first 48 sophomore year, the reason I went that fast was cause I realized I was bad at breathing and I just fixed the breath. So I don't know, constantly learning. Um, but I had swam the 47, four relay split after my open event already. And I, I had matched my personal, my best of like 48, two at WUGS. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had the split on the last day on the last medley relay, I believe. And so I, if I left a little bit of a fire, right. I was like, okay, well, if I can split that fast, I obviously can swim it faster. Cause that's faster than, you know, doesn't make sense. The add up doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, and so I was able to, you know, take some of the advice that I got on that trip and put it into my training for the next, it was two weeks, I think, or three weeks in between. Um, and then it was honestly a perfect storm in, uh, uh, in Palo Alto because that's like my favorite pool. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get to Palo Alto, I want to, I want to, I want to keep it on Wugs for a minute. I mean, uh, Wugs was awesome. Tell me about that 400 free relay because you touched on it. You know, you said you, you, you described the situation, but. Oh my was, gosh. It was. Yeah. Honestly, life changing. Like I'm never going to forget it. It was so much crazy stuff happened like in that one. It just. Okay, here we go. Right. So like I said, all the boys in the ready room. And this is like what I vividly remember. It was like me and Robert Howard, like syncing up courtesy of the red, white and blue by Toby Keith on our phones in our headphones walking out and like that's a song that i've like really felt like a lot of i don't know if you've heard the song but if you haven't i would recommend it i felt a lot of pride for it in like in my whole life like i've always really liked it i've always really liked like the like the just the pride that it has like it's just like yes like this is our country like america like yes and being able to listen to it on that walkout was i mean i cried right like it's like you get those like just so much emotion you're just like oh and then to go out and because we kind of trashed that relay <laughs> like we went really fast um and that was incredible too i think i was i went second i think i think i went second um because i watched dean's anchor or i might have them backwards actually i think i might have anchored and dean went second because <laughs> there was two different relays i think yeah yeah i think it's on oh no no this i i anchored this one because I remember we were so far ahead that it like didn't even matter. <laughs> like we were like 16 seconds ahead or something just dumb. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I think I anchored that one and that was really cool too. Cause like who doesn't love to be the anchor swimmer, <laughs> especially diving in with the lead. Like it was so, so cool. Um, but I, I definitely did actually prefer the one where I went second more the relay where I went second because I did get to see the ending of that race. And I, if I remember correctly, that race was much closer. Okay. Um, so that was, that was really cool. And it was, you know, in general Wugs as my first travel USA trip was just crazy. Cause I got to, like I said about all my friends, I got to meet so many people I've never met before. And it, like also awesome to be on a team with Cal, right? Like I was on, I got to see Chase again. Like Chase was one of my coaches there. Like Mm -hmm. Sean was there with me. Like it was just cool to have friends that were my friends. And Mm -hmm. then just, you know, there's a little bit of a drift there, right? Like we don't necessarily hang out all that much. Um, And it was sweet to have those guys there, right? Like I was got close with those guys just pretty quickly and it was nice to have them. So yeah, yeah, Wilkes was great it was some stuff we would have changed logistically but it was great i heard i heard the accommodate so you guys stayed in boats right <laughs> cruise ships yeah my room was nah, i shared with jeff newkirk our wow. room was not big we, we commonly would say that our shower is if you go like this just put your fists together and spin in a circle uh-huh. that's that's how big our shower was and then it was like <laughs> five foot eight i yeah i remember hearing about it uh, yeah i remember hearing people weren't stoked but it sounded like a one a, a one-of-a-kind experience yeah the, the real and like really the only complaint that most people had was just the bus system because you we were staying in those boats and we were probably 25 35 minutes away from the pool oh wow okay and so it's like 
if you had an early morning event, you're waking up really early to eat breakfast because you still have to get on the bus on time mm -hmm. and then get there. And then the thing about Italy is there is no bus on time. The bus leaves whenever the bus driver wants it to leave. <laughs> and if it's the 815 bus, that means it could leave at 805 or that means it could leave at 825. Oh, wow. Um, and so if you're really stressed about an event or like if you're one of those swimmers that are very particular about their timing, mm -hmm. it could be very stressful. Gotcha. But that was really the only real bad part about me. The rooms were fine. I loved how they were small. That, <laughs> that increases the amount of camaraderie. Like you can, you mess around more in a small room than you would in a mansion, right? Like fair point More shenanigans. I'm all about the shenanigans guys. <laughs> all right. So, so now let's get into Palo Alto. So Palo Alto was sweet because that's personally like one of my favorite pools mm. in the country. It's a nice, um, it's, it's a nice pool. That was my first juniors, right? Like I said, that was the first okay. time I was ever at a juniors meet and saw Nitro go super fast. And I was like, holy cow, maybe yeah. I should check out this Nitro place. Yeah. Um, and I love the pool space. I love, you really never have to fight for a lane for warm down. Like it's, it just feels very much about the summer when you're at Palo Alto. Like everything always feels like, oh, this is this way for me. And that's nice. It makes you feel really fast and like ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then yeah that that race was incredible that hunter free was sick it was really cool the morning swim had me very excited for the night swim mm -hmm. would you go on the I, uh, 48 i think i went like the exact same time too i think I went like 48 two like like right at my best time mm -hmm. and so i was you know i was pretty excited um i never in a million years could have told you that ryan was going to go as fast as he did though that blew my mind i mean i think that final seat's one of the fastest 100 freestyle heats in history <laughs> i turned at the 50 and took probably four or five strokes and breathed to right and i thought to myself oh my god i'm gonna go 48 five like i'm getting annihilated because in my mind i got i got ryan going seven six seven seven I got Maxime then at 8 and I'm like, I'm behind. This is not good. <laughs> and uh, I honestly, like, maybe credit to that, honestly, because head down, like, tried to finish the race. Last 10 strokes were just trashed, um, completely blown away. It was – that was – I got goosebumps right now. I'm completely blown away with that race. It was incredible. I don't remember a lot of it, and people always – you know, that's always how you know that it was a good race, was if you don't remember it very much. Yeah. Um, I, there's a, there's a EDM song. And this is something I told people when I was at Palo Alto, there's an EDM song where the guy comes over the speakers and he just says run. And then the beat drops. And I swear that that is what happened when I flipped, like I flipped <laughs> and my feet hit the wall and in my head, I heard run. And then I just pushed off and took off. It was sweet. It could have been in a movie. It was just in my head though. Um, and for, so, so for context here, you know, the race finishes Ryan held, 47 yeah, 3 two? yeah whatever 47 3, 3 US open record Maxime 47 6 you were 47 8 47 8 8, eight. yeah yeah 47 8 8 because I'm off by 0.01 because Blake was 47 8 7 and Blake beat me by 1 100th gotcha at uh worlds or wherever they would have been the travel the travel squad beat at worlds yeah at worlds um yeah so so that's you know obviously that's a, that's an incredible swim got you on the national team you were like i mean insanely you were like one of six americans or something like that to go 47 yeah absurd season. absurd <laughs> um and so did you swim what else did you swim the, the the rest of the meet so actually and i was like about to say that i the one the race that i remember the most was the hunter butterfly okay because I, I think I dropped like a ton of time in that too. And I, again, I don't remember my hunter butterfly. Hunter, I'm not a hunter butterfly. I don't really remember the time. But that was the thing was the whole time I was like, guys, I still don't know how to swim a hunter butterfly. And if you watch any of my hunter butterflies through my entire swimming history, there's like one good one ever because I'm real good at about a 65 fly. And then I can't do the stroke anymore. It like fall. My stroke falls apart completely. My hips drop, my shoulders start dropping. And for some reason at Palo Alto, it just didn't fall apart. And like, I just was able to keep swimming my normal butterfly for the whole 100. And I dropped like 
almost two seconds made B final. I, it blew me away. I was like, what the heck? It felt so good. <laughs> Um, and actually like through quarantine, my butterflies felt really, really good. I don't know if it's just cause I'm with Maxime trying to race him or what's going on there. But, um, that was probably honestly like probably, I probably enjoyed that race, like swimming it and like the, the, the aura surrounding the hundred butterfly, I think I like more than the hundred free. There's more pressure in the hundred free. Mm-hmm. There's more, you know, that's my event, right? Like that's what I'm good at. And so I feel like there's more pressure there. The hundred fly is my fun event. Like I'm, I'm good at it. Yeah, but it, you know, no one's expecting to make a team in it. It's just there. It's just something <laughs> I can explore and like, just mess with the power and like the feeling of like swimming another hundred. Mm-hmm. So I really yeah. liked that race. That was a good one. Nice. Fifty three uh, was disappointing at that meet, though. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't got a best time in the fifty three long course in like two years. I'm still at like twenty two nine. It's still my best time ever. Uh, I think actually that's not true at all. I think I went twenty two six, but I don't remember. It's been a while, but I, I swam in Jeff's cap for the 50 free for that meet because I was just like, I can't, I need to change something. Something's got to change. Put Jeff's cap on. Let's hope that works. Gotcha. But <laughs> well, I'll figure it out eventually. Yeah, you'll get there. We've got time now. <laughs> I need arms like Caleb or something. I need to lift more. Uh... <laughs> Dude, don't we all? <laughs> don't, don't we all? Um, True. So, so to, to wrap things up here, you know, moving forward, what – you know, you're able to train, which is awesome. What What are you thinking about the next couple of months? I mean, there's, there's, you know, it's, it's hard to make plans. Do you have goals yeah. for yourself? Do you have any plans? What, what are you thinking moving forward? No, I think in like what I've kind of thought all of quarantine is like right now you need to do what's probably best for your brain as opposed to the sport. Um, Cause honestly, at this point, we, we don't really know right? Like, yeah, I'd love the Olympics to happen next year, but like, come on, we don't really know that they're gonna, yeah. like, that's not really a promise. Yes. And that goes for everything, right? Like I would love to race a nationals this fall, but like, it might not happen. And so for me, a lot of it is like, keep training. Um, I'm personally trying not to stress out about the little things in training as much. Right. So like in a normal year, if I missed a practice, it'd probably be like, I'd be a little bit more peeved. I'm obviously still swimming like five or six times a week right now, like pretty heavy, hard practices. But like if I'm doing 7,000 a practice five times a week, that's a good amount. Like that's pretty solid training. Um, And so for me, it's like keep the brain good because I think that right now would be a really easy time for somebody, right? Anybody, myself included, to start almost obsessing a little bit in the way that there's literally nothing else you can do, right? Like there's no other outlet you have. You can't really compete. There's not a whole lot of social interaction going on. I could easily see how me or anybody could start obsessing over training and obsessing over that. Um, And for some people that might be extremely good for myself. I don't think it would. I think that, uh, you know, I've gone as far as I am by keeping something very fun and uh, keeping it as a, as a, like an activity that I really enjoy doing. And so I think that obsession is not necessarily the route that I want to go. Um, so I definitely have goals. Like I'm training pretty hard. Um, I'm hopefully going to throw on a suit and do something fast, like just on a, any random practice, maybe this week. Um, I don't have any plans for anything sanctioned. I don't know anything, know about anything sanctioned. Um, but for me, it's just kind of keep on keeping on um, and prepare as best as you can for all of the variabilities that could be right. There could be everything could go great and we could cure it tomorrow and everything could be fine. And then I'd be fine. Right. I've been training, training fine, lifting fine, or I could keep doing this for six months and they could cancel it again. In which case I'm still fine. Like I'm ready. We can start getting ready for ISL or world cup or whatever it may be. That's kind of where I'm at. It's just like, let's keep it steady. Let's stay happy. And let's, uh, let's be ready for whatever it may be. That's going to happen. Sage advice from Tate Jackson. I think we just got like a, a, a mini mental clinic in five minutes. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> well, Tate, thank you so much for your time. It was it was great catching up with you. Hey, thanks for having me. It's good to see you. It's, hopefully I'll see you again on a pool deck. Fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. 
You can take Swim Swim Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.